Welcome to Arizona 235, field density and moisture content of soil and soil aggregate mixtures by the nuclear method. Prior to each day, a standard moisture count and standard density count must be taken at the location where the testing is to be done. Select a location for the field density test at random, where the gauge will be at least 24 inches from any vertical projection such as a trench wall, a retaining wall, or a pipe and it must be at least 15 feet away from any person or vehicle and at least 50 feet away from another nuclear gauge. If it's within 24 inches of a vertical projection, refer to Section 8 of Arizona 235, Trench Correction. Remove all loose, disturbed, and excess material as necessary to reach the top of the compacted lift to be tested. Prepare a horizontal area sufficient in size to accommodate the gauge using the scraper plate supplied with the gauge. Plane the area to a smooth condition. Remove loose stones to obtain maximum contact between the gauge and the soil or aggregate which is being tested. Make sure the gauge sits solidly on the test site without rocking. Next, use native fines which will pass a number 10 sieve or fine dry sand to fill voids only and level the excess with the scraper plate. The total area of voids filled with fines or sand should be minimized as much as possible. Once you have filled all of the voids, use a scraper plate to tamp down the surface so that it remains smooth for testing. To prepare the gauge for direct transmission testing, place the scraper plate drill rod guide on the test site so that the access hole for the probe will be at the desired location. Securely hold the scraper plate in place while driving the drill rod into the material. The hole should be at least two inches deeper than the depth to be tested. Note, there are depth marks on the drill rod to indicate depth. Safety goggles and steel-toed footwear should be worn while driving the drill rod. It would be desirable to turn the drill rod slightly after every couple of blows to allow for easier removal. Remove the drill rod by pulling straight up in order to avoid disturbing the access hole. Carefully place the gauge over the access hole and extend the probe into the hole to the desired direct transmission mode depth according to the lift thickness as outlined previously. Do not force the probe into the hole. If the probe will not extend into the hole, pull the probe back up. Lift up the gauge and check for a probe imprint. This will help determine if a slight change in the position of the gauge is necessary to allow the probe to enter the hole. Once the probe is in the hole, gently push it down. Some minor shifting of the gauge may be required to extend the probe into gravelly soils. However, if an obstruction is encountered, it may be necessary to use the drill rod again to open up the hole. Take density and moisture counts for a minimum one minute time period by pressing the proper button on the gauge. Both counts normally will occur simultaneously during the count period. Refer to the gauge operation manual. After the count period, press the proper button to obtain the moisture count. Record the moisture count on the data sheet as MC. Also, in a similar manner, obtain the density count. Record the density count on the data sheet as DC. It is also possible to get a wet density and moisture content readout in pounds per cubic foot at this time for gauges capable of storing the standard counts and calculating these values. Please refer to the gauge operation manual. In those instances, when the soil or soil aggregate mixture being tested in place is not homogeneous and or contains substantial variations in the rock content, it may be necessary to rotate the gauge 90 degrees at each test site and obtain an additional moisture and wet density reading at that position. If the new moisture and wet density readings differ by 5% or less from the original readings, the two readings may be averaged for use in later calculations. If, however, they differ from the original readings by more than 5%, the gauge should be moved to a new test site. Now, prepare an area directly underneath the nuclear gauge for excavation. 
you need to obtain a minimum 3,000 gram or 7 pound sample of excavated material and weigh to the nearest gram. Record that weight of the sample as A. Sieve this material first over a 3 inch sieve to determine the presence of any oversized rock material. If any oversized rock is encountered, refer to section 7D of Arizona 235. If not, sieve the material over a number 4 sieve, method A, or 3 quarter inch sieve, which is alternate method D, and record the weight of retained material as B. Proceed to calculations. Please be sure to review all of the material available in your field technician certification workbook.